everybody, welcome to Premiere Pro. My name is Gilles Class. Welcome to Premiere Basics, a weekly series where we teach you all the ins and outs of Adobe Premiere Pro. Yes. Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to our newest live stream. Today we're going to edit a TikTok video. And I know some of you don't have TikTok or maybe it's banned in your country. Yeah, I can't do nothing about that, but we're still going to edit something. Um, I saw a bunch of videos about Julian Bass and, or Bass, whatever you wanna pronounce it, and Josh VFX. And those guys claim to be the CEO of editings on TikTok. They're kind of doing an edit war. Um, I don't know if it's still a hype or something, but yeah, I, I, it came across. So uh, I saw it and I thought, these guys are good, but they're all doing it in Adobe After Effects. So let's join them, but only with Adobe Premiere Pro. Now let's see guys, let me know how are you guys doing? What's going on with you guys? Okay, so I already see that a couple of you are saying that it's banned in your country. Sorry guys, but you can follow along, of course, we're just editing a video. You can also use this just for your Instagram stories, maybe, or even for um, Facebook stories or for YouTube or whatever. Um, we're just going over some effects. Um, I got some inspiration from Josh VFX and Julian Bass, but um, like I said, we're all gonna make this inside of Premiere Pro. And we're not going to use After Effects. We're not gonna use any plugins. Um, that are paid for or anything else. So we're just using Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, now it could be that I will be using some stock clips from uh, Storyblocks, for example, but of course you can also use other stock clips or just not use any. Um, it's just a little bit of an extra touch. Let's see, yeah, um, everyone's saying that it's a little bit dull. I checked my settings on here, but apparently for some reason, um, the camera settings make everything a little bit dull, so I'm not sure, maybe it's something internal in the camera. Maybe Jordi or Janik changed something without me knowing. So uh, anyway, let's jump into Premiere Pro. So as you can see, I uh, rearranged everything here a bit. Uh, this is my sequence uh, right here, and this is the program monitor, of course, showing the sequence, uh, as you see. Of course, we're using a vertical video because we're showing this on our phones. Now, I already went ahead and made a little bit of an edit uh, just to test some stuff out and see if that worked and also because otherwise uh, it would have um, been a lot of time here in the live stream. So that's why I already went ahead and did a couple of things. Now, before we get started, of course, um, you're probably asking Jill, how do you make a vertical sequence? Well, you go into your project folder and you right click new item sequence, or you go up here and you select new sequence or just control N. Now we want to make a new sequence. So we're here in our sequence menu. Then we go to settings. We're gonna change this to custom, the editing mode right here. Now our time space is our uh, frames per second. Now I just use 30 because the video that I shot it with is also in 30 frames per second. Now for the frame size, we want a uh, nine by 16. So here you can see 16 by nine and that's a normal um, horizontal video, but we're gonna make this vertical. So it's 1080, oh, that's like this, by 1920. And that will give us a nine by 16. Now for the video previews, I always change this to QuickTime and Apple Pro does 422. Uh, just a little bit better when you're rendering like this. Now I'm not gonna save this because I already have one. So let's cancel this and let's jump into our sequence here. Now for the footage, um, I was going for kind of a Julian Bass and um, Josh VFX kind of mess, mech, mashup. Is it what, that's what it's called, mashup, a mashup? Yeah, it's a mashup probably. Um, so let's check the footage. I've got my rushes right here. Uh, let's change this to this view right here. Um, okay, so here I first made 
on um, a clean plate, but it looked kind of boring. I needed an extra light, I needed some background lighting, so that's why I changed it to this. Now, here you can see some rep. It's because otherwise there was a, a lamp on top of here and that would have shined into my lens, giving it a little bit of lens flare. Now, unfortunately, I didn't really see this when I was filming, but there is still some lens flare on screen, which actually you don't want to have. So make sure you don't have any lens flares. It just makes it easier when editing. As you can see, I added some blue light on here on the background and some uh, small lights up here. It's way better than this. Okay, then let's go to our shot. So what I first did, I was walking on screen and I wanted to start with me flying in. So I just pretended that I jumped up and fell down. Now you'll immediately see what I was doing with this right here, but this is what I first shot. It's just me falling onto the ground, making an entrance on screen. And I think that's a cool way to start. You immediately catch the audience's attention. They're like, oh, where is he coming from? He's falling from somewhere. Um, and that's how I uh, was planning to do this. Now, further gone, I ripped my shirt open right here. And here I wanted to make a transition, just a simple cut transition where you cut in the movement. Now, it's just, uh, I will show it later to you, it's right here. Um, so what I did was I just changed my clothes. I put on a VR backpack that we have in the studio right here. And some, um, I don't know what, what's, what the name of it is, but it's like a um, kind of protection gear for your hands when you're skating or something. And I just did the exact same movement over here. So ripping it open like this, and that's where I'm going to make a cut. Then I just did a little bit of a dance because what I was going to aim for is uh, I was going to track my head. Now, of course, we all know that Premiere Pro doesn't have a tracker. So I'm gonna manually do this. That's why I already prepared everything here because it takes a lot of time to do that. Um, and it's also an effect on TikTok itself. It's the head tracker. Uh, and actually TikTok has some really good effects in the app itself. And basically what it does is it tracks the movement of your head. So it's always in the same position and it just changes the camera view so your head is always aligned on the same spot. So that's what I was aiming for with this. So I just did some movements, did a little bit of dancing, and then I saw uh, on Josh VFX's videos that he often like um, flies in kind of, uh, what's it called? Uh, freeze frames of, of himself. I think it's freeze frames, but I'm not sure how he does it, but I think that's the way he does it. So what I just did was I pretended to do some poses right here, and I'm gonna make some freeze frames out of those, cut them out and let them fly on screen just like he does. So I did a couple of poses here. And then here I pretended to open something. That's why I'm where I'm going to make the logo from uh, Premiere Basics. Then I did a spin. So I'm gonna, as you can see right here, I did a spin like this. And then I'm gonna turn the logo and then I pushed it forward towards the camera and that's where I'm going to push the logo towards the camera. Now, of course, you may think that we don't have a 3D view inside of Premiere Pro, which is true. So we're all gonna do this manually and fake that it is flying towards our camera, our viewer. Now, as you can see, this is all shot on a tripod. So we're also going to make a handheld movement. Um, yeah, and what I did at the end was I pretended to fly away just the same as in the beginning. Here I'm going off screen and then I can cut it exactly to the beginning where I fly on screen and that way I create a loop. Then I thought of some other effects. So what I did here was I did some kind of hand gestures like uh, I think it's Naruto who does it. Um, I also saw this on Julius Basis TikTok where he zooms in onto the hands, he speed ramps everything like and then he does an effect. So yeah, that's why I did that as an extra. Here I pretended to stand on multiple places at once. So it's here in the middle, me doing a dance, same here. And same on the other side. And there we can do like a basic cloning technique. Now the only problem that I have right here is that I have a lot of shadow casting on the ground here. And it's always going to interact with the person in front of it, as you can see. Here also the shadows, but um, we can make some quick fixes for that so that you don't see the shadows. So that's a good thing. Um, 
but make sure normally that you don't have those shadows. And then the last thing that I did right here was I flew towards my camera with my eyes open and here I want to make some kind of effects on my eyes if we still have the time for that. Okay, I'm gonna close this panel. Let's see. And I'm first gonna go into your comments. I'm gonna answer some comments real quickly and then we're gonna dive into the edit that I already made. So, let's see what you guys are saying. Uh, some people are talking about the camera colors. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with the camera. I've changed it here and the settings are the exact same as they always are. So I think somebody changed some settings in the camera itself. Uh, sorry guys for that. Let's see. What are the specifications of a TikTok video? Well, as I said, first you have to make your video vertical. That's the most important thing. And um, it can be, I think, um, between 15 and, or maybe between 10 and one minute long. So 10 seconds and one minute. I think that's about the um, maximum that you can go. It's like one minute. I think the minimum is like 10 seconds. It could be less, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I'm not that familiar with TikTok. I have TikTok myself. Uh, I don't use it very often, but I like looking at it. There are some really cool creators on there. I don't watch the TikTok dances uh, and all the girls doing that. I mainly look for other creators, photographers, videographers, editors. And also since I'm a Call of Duty Warzone gamer, I also check for Warzone videos on there. Uh, so yeah. Uh, hello from Slovakia, hello from Israel, hello guys, w greetings from Belgium. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Someone is using Vegas. No problem, you can still follow along. All of the effects that we're creating inside of Premiere are, I think, also available in Sony Vegas or Final Cut Pro or whatever app that you are using. I think even Filmora Pro and HitFilm and all of that, which are free. Uh, someone is asking, tell us about which country is best for film studies. I actually have no idea. I went to film school myself. I didn't finish it. Uh, Jordi did. Um, Oh, I see someone else asking the same question. Did you, did you go to film school? If so, which one? I went to um, Narafi in Brussels. I, uh, Jordi also went there. I think it's called Luca School of Arts right now. Um, I didn't finish it. I just went for two years and then I started my own company. So that's why I quit. And I went to do some other, uh, I went to another school uh, to learn some other stuff where I also met Lorenzo actually. As a coincidence, we're all here together now. And Jordi did film the Finnish school and Lorenzo finished the other school that I went to, which I also didn't finish. Um, yeah. I don't know what, it's, what the thing is between me and schools, but <laughs> I never finished them for uh, some reason. Um, let's see, let's see. Well, everything is so going so fast. Where was I? Um, someone said, I got famous because of you. How's that? Why did you get famous because of me? Uh, is this channel dead as well? No, it isn't. It's super alive, alive and kicking. Uh, we create um, live streams each Monday and tutorials each Wednesday. And yeah, we're just starting this channel. We're still, at, I think we're already at like 23K followers or subscribers, whatever you want to call it. So thank you guys for that. Thank you so much for the support. Um, you can always leave a donation and we're working on a membership where you will get some exclusives when you pay like a small price every month on YouTube. Uh, you will get like custom made emojis and some like um, feedback from us on your projects and stuff like that. But we're still working on all of that. It's probably coming in 2021. Let's see. Okay. 
What time is it in your area? Well, currently it's 3.45 in the afternoon right now. Okay, so, okay, let's go to... Is Jordy all right? Yeah, Jordy is all right. I'm not, I'm not sure why you're asking that. Did you see something about Jordy maybe? But yeah, he's all right. He's, all right. he's uh, currently editing in the office uh, with Lorenzo and Jenik. You never finished school, but you teach very well. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Bellum Videos. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's not because you went to film school that you, kn that you do not know a lot about video or something like that. You can also like learn a lot from online courses, for example, on Skillshare or other platforms, or just YouTube. You can learn so much on YouTube nowadays. Um, TikTok is cringe. Well, some of it is. Uh, like I said, there are some really good creators on there who I highly recommend watching and following. But yeah, there are a lot of cringe dances and stuff like that um, that I don't like as well. Let's see. Can you host a live stream for Cinecom? I will ask Jordy. I will ask Jordy. Okay, guys, I will go back into Premiere and we're gonna start editing. Here we are. Okay, I hope you guys can see me well. Do I have to change the view to somewhere else maybe? Let me know. Do I have to change the webcam or camera, whatever you wanna call it? Uh, view somewhere else. If so, let me know. Otherwise, I will just continue. Okay, so let's play the thing that I already made. Um, it's not finished yet. It's just uh, a basic edit that I started. So let's have a look. Okay, so that was the thing that I already did. Let's put it to full resolution actually. So I started with myself flying on screen. Now the fault that I made here, so I want to redo this actually, is that um, I was still jumping up when the clip started, so I was not going down already. And that's why there's like a hesitation here when I'm falling. So we're gonna do this again. I'm gonna take this dust layer here and move it. Let's zoom in. Okay, so how did I do this? Let's get rid of this one. Uh, will I delete it? No, I'm just gonna do like this. Here you go. So, where am I actually falling? Here, I'm falling here. Uh, let's see if there's another frame that is a little bit better. Mm, yeah, this one is good. So, I'm going to, let's see the, okay, I'm gonna just place a little cut uh, here. Um, so I'm gonna use this part right here. I'm gonna click Alt and drag it on top. That way I get a duplicate. I'm gonna right click and add a frame hold. Delete this section right here. And this is now a freeze frame of this frame. Now what I wanna do is I want to cut out myself out of this frame. So what I can do, let's disable these tracks for a moment is I'm going into my effects controls right here, go to opacity and use the pen tool to mask myself out. That's what I did in the nested sequence right here. But there's also another way that you can do this if you have Adobe Photoshop. Um, now I think I'm gonna use that method real quick because this masking this is gonna take a while. Um, so I'm just gonna use the Photoshop technique. So what you wanna do is hit export frame import into project, you're gonna give this a name. I'm gonna make this freeze frame number one. Format can be a PNG, that's good enough. And I'm actually gonna put this, let's see. Uh, I can't see very well my eyes. I have to adjust, uh, where is my desktop right here let's see live stream okay select the folder so desktop live stream yes here we go and here 
is now our PNG. So what we're gonna do is right click and then hit edit in Adobe Photoshop. Now if you don't have Photoshop, just go ahead and use this pen tool right here to mask the entire body out of this frame. Now, like I said, it's taking a, quite a while to do that. So I'm just gonna use the Photoshop technique. If you don't have Photoshop, take your time to do that masking, of course. In Photoshop, it's super simple. Just go to select, select a subject, and normally, bam, he selected the entire person right here, which is me. And I'm just gonna make a mask from it. Bam, that's all right. And normally if I save this, let's see. Freeze frame one, still a PNG, that's good. Save, do you want to replace it? Yes, yes. Close, uh, save changes, yes. I already did that actually, but okay, let's do it again. Here we go. Now we're going back to Premiere Pro. And when I drag this free frame on top of here, let's put it on this track, let's cut it. Now it's actually just me. Okay, so like this. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna keep this here just for a moment, because that's the point where I want everything to start. Now this bottom clip right here, this is my uh, clean plate. So there's nothing on here, it's just my background without me in it. And this is me. Now, if you did mask everything, just like I did here in this nested layer, this is me as a mask. As you can see here, I made a mask. Uh, if you did this, then you first have to right click on there and nest it. Otherwise, you can't do the next step. It will probably uh, glitch a little bit uh, because that's just how Premiere works, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna disable this one. Maybe put it here, actually. And I'm gonna put the freeze frame here. So next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the transform effect. Here we go. Let's scroll down. Uncheck use composition's shutter angle and put a shutter angle of 180. And this will give us motion blur whenever we change some values here. Um, so let's put this one right here just to see the timing of this. Same here. Let's put two keyframes. Let's go back here, next, and same here. Okay, now we can delete the nested layer. And let's see, we'll go to the beginning keyframe. So our last keyframe is the position right here. That's where it's supposed to be. But our beginning keyframe needs to be off screen. So uh, we don't actually have to do the anchor point. It was the scaling, I'm sorry. I made a quick mistake, no problem, here we go. So the scaling can go a little bit smaller, so maybe 90%, and we're gonna let this fly from the top of our screen towards the position that it has to be. Select the keyframes, right click, ease out. Select the last keyframes, right click, temporal interpolation, ease in, and now this should look like this, okay. Now, as you can see here, it's not good because we wanted to start right here. So at this point, let's see right here, I'm gonna click on my clip and select M, which gives us a marker. I'm gonna line it up right here, delete this, delete this. And actually now I can also, bam. So now I fly on screen. And at this point, I actually have to cut it. Let's see, looking way better. Okay, so now, uh, as you can see, there's still a period of time where it, it's kind of slow. So what I'm actually gonna do is place this one, one keyframe ahead. Um, wait, I'm actually gonna first delete this and just do it like this. Place this one one keyframe ahead, so Alt, left. And normally this should look way better. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, now I'm just gonna leave it as it was. So I hit Control Z actually. 
that's nice, looking neat. I'm gonna place my dust clip on there. And this is actually a dust clip that I got from Storyblocks, I think. I'm not entirely sure, I think I did get it from Storyblocks. And basically it comes in whenever I'm hitting the ground. I think it's going, no, it's a little bit too, coming in too fast, so. Now it's right. Looking nice, looking nice. We do have a lot of uh, artifacts right here, but it doesn't really matter. It's still for TikTok, so. Let's see. Mm, no, it's good like this. Okay, let's save this real quick and I'm gonna head over to the comment section because Bellum Videos just donated. Thank you so much, Bellum Videos. Let's put your name in here. Let's see. Here you go. So guys, if you donate, I put your name right here. Um, that way everyone can have a look at your account as well. So uh, thank you so much, Bellum. Where is your name? It's right here, actually. Seven times already. You're on a roll, man. Okay, okay, okay. Let's have a look at the comments real quick. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. How long do you edit with Premiere Pro? I've been editing with Premiere Pro for about, let me check, I think about eight or nine years now. Yeah, so it's quite a while. Um, I wasn't good at it in the beginning. Um, I actually learned the most uh, things in Premiere Pro the past, I don't know, six or seven years. So in the beginning, I was really bad at it. I really didn't understand anything about it. Same with Photoshop. Um, I was just hitting some buttons and hoping that it would turn out eventually the way that I wanted it to look. But yeah, I wasn't uh, thinking about it. Oh, yeah, now I know why you're asking about Jordy, because he fell, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I wasn't there when he fell, actually. Um, yeah, he's good, he still has some pain, though, but um, no, everything is okay with him. He's just uh, in some pain, but yeah, that's what you get when you're doing some crazy stunts, right? Mm, let's see, thoughts on 2021 Premiere Pro? Um, haven't worked with it yet, but it looks promising, especially the captions section, which is coming, um, because nowadays it's a little bit a workaround to get good subtitles on your videos, and with that new caption menu, everything will be way easier. Actually, it will also, um, I mean, I saw a tutorial where it should, like, um, translate everything that you're saying, and make that an automatic uh, subtitle. So not sure if that really works, but I'm curious to find out. So yeah. Uh, let's see, you don't come on Cinecom, I don't see you. Uh, yeah, because they're mainly focusing on uh, Creative Tuesday and Copycat Friday, and I mainly focus on Premiere Basics now. So that's why you don't see me a lot in, uh, in the Cinecom videos anymore. Uh, when should we switch to 2021? Well, whenever it comes out. I'm not sure it's, uh, if it's out yet, but uh, I would wait. I would. I always wait with the newest updates. Just like wait for a couple of weeks, then you know that the first glitches and bugs are already gone when you're um, changing to it. Let's see. Someone switched to Resolve. Yeah, Resolve is also really good. It's uh, really strong especially for color grading. Um, but yeah, I love using Premiere Pro. Okay, so someone is uh, speaking Spanish. Uh, sorry, my Spanish isn't that good. Uh, unfortunately, I can't really understand whatever you are saying. How's the carpet? Broken. Yeah, <laughs> there's an entire hole in it and as well here. This is actually from one of the first live streams where Jordy 
also came on camera for a moment. It was, I think we were figuring some stuff out for the live stream. And yeah, I think he fell or something and he ripped the carpet right here. And last week he ripped the carpet right there. So yeah, the carpet is quite broken. It's quite ripped. <laughs> Uh, say something in your native language. Hello allemaal and welcome by Premier Basics. So that's Dutch. <laughs> uh, let's see, how is the creative uh, Tuesday team? Really good, we're uh, currently, um, it's mostly Lorenzo who helps uh, Jordi with his videos for Tuesdays um, while Janik prepares for the Copic at Fridays and then later on Lorenzo joins uh, Janik and they both finish the Copic at Friday videos and like I said I mainly focus on Premiere Basics so uh, every Monday we're doing the live streams on here and every Wednesday we post a tutorial so yeah each uh, team member here has his or I want to say her but there aren't any females here <laughs> so every teammate has his, uh, his focus Uh, which virgin version am I using of Premiere Pro? I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro 2020. Um, I think there is a command for that. I think if you type uh, exclamation mark setup, you will see uh, whatever I am using. What is your full name? My full name is Jill Class. So that's G I L L E S C L A E S. <laughs> that ain't Dutch, that's Limberis. Yeah, man. Sorry, I do have a little bit of an accent, apparently. Uh, how could you stand out in editing? Just practice a lot. Like, start making stuff. Don't think too much about, oh, am I good? Am I making any mistakes? You have to make mistakes. If you don't make a mistake, you don't learn from it. So go ahead, make stuff, make mistakes, learn from those mistakes, get better and better and better, get inspiration from other people, um, just like we're doing today because actually this is inspired by those other guys from TikTok who use After Effects for this. I wanted to create everything in Premiere Pro. So that's my um, focus of the day. Yeah. Let's see. Can you show the final video? No, because it's not done yet. We're going to work further on it. Uh, last question and then I'm gonna proceed editing what is the key to great editor like I said just practice a lot make just continuously make videos continue continuously sorry <laughs> just keep on creating that's why we always say stay creative just keep on going keep on making videos whatever it is and you don't have to have a super expensive camera like a red camera or whatever just use your phone make some videos you can either make them vertically or horizontally upload them to your pc or edit them on your phone maybe and yeah just um yeah just go ahead and make some stuff make some mistakes learn from those go on youtube go on skillshare and learn 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 okay i get two more questions that i really want to answer because those are uh, really 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 interesting questions so the first one is can you talk about um universe echo which is actually from red giant so it's a paid plugin i wanted to use it for today's uh, tutorial here on the live stream but since it's paid since it's from red giant and it's quite expensive i didn't want to use it so yeah unfortunately we're not going to use that um also we have another donation from action akshay krishna and i think you already did a donation didn't you yes you did here you are so that's two. Thank you so much. Can you guys see it well? I hope you can. So I'm gonna put your name on there as well. Oh, Akshay Krishna, here you go. Thank you so much for the support, guys. Check out the channel of Akshay Krishna. Um, and then the last question I wanted to answer before we start back with the editing is can i uh wait wait, wait uh, is it possible to track motion in premiere no it isn't but we're gonna dive into that right now so first up uh, we're going to make a transition from my clothes with the blue shirt right here 
to the uh, I call it kind of a jetpack guy uh, but actually with the VR system on the back so as you can see I'm gonna whoops not this I wanna yeah put it away for a moment this is just my simple transition so it's basically just me doing an action and I'm cutting in that action to my second scene. Now I wanted to make this a little bit more, you know, cooler. So what I did was I placed an adjustment layer on there, which I can do by clicking, right clicking on here in my uh, project folder and going to new item, adjustment layer, or I go to this icon right here, which is the new item icon and select adjustment layer. So that's this one right here. I made it uh, 12 frames long, so it's six seconds on this part, right? Or six frames on this part and six frames on this part right here. And my um, effect is gonna be actually in the middle right here. It's gonna make a transition. So the first thing that I did, let's uh, get rid of this, was use the transform effect and I animated the position and scaling so that it's going towards me and that way I hide the mistakes in the action a little bit because my arms were a little bit too wide in the first shot or in the second shot, I'm not sure entirely. But that way I kind of hide my mistake, which is already cool. But as you can see, it's still not that good. So what I did was I, uh, let's go back to the adjustment layer. I also applied some motion blur to it. So I dechecked this checkbox right here put it to 180 shutter angle. I zoomed in and actually this is the part where my zoom has to end and then I zoom back out for six frames. But then I went on and did the uh, brightness and contrast effect on this as well. And here I also made an animation with the brightness. So it's starting from zero and I think it's about three frames long. Let's check one, two, three. Yes, it is. So it's half the length of my other effect. And here it's going to, uh, yeah, this can be 50, for example, or it can even go to 100, whatever you want, and then go back to zero. Now what this does, it's like a bam, it's like a flash, but I think 100 is a little bit too much. So I'm gonna put it back to 50. And that way it creates like a flash and that's when uh, I transition to my new outfit. So yeah, um, this is already looking good. And then I'm like, oh, cool. I zoom in and then I'm gonna start dancing. And now here you can see that I motion tracked my face. So my face is always in the same position. Now, how did I do this? Well, it, this is, actually taking a lot of time guys so I already put some effort into this um, but I didn't finish it quite um, quite good so we still have to do some uh, last stuff on there so let's click on there not this I want my effects controls yes here it is and as you can see we did use the transform effect again with a ton of keyframes let me zoom in because it's just a line now but here you can see that we have lots and lots and lots of keyframes. So what did I do? Okay, let me, um, let's take this right here. So I want to keep my head on the same position the entire time, but how did I do that? Well, from the program monitor, you can go into the plus icon right here and look for the safe margins, you can drag it in, and the show guides. Here you go. Now you can always, uh, you can also select these, for example, like this, and then you can, ooh, how do you do the guides again? Normally you, should, you can drag those from somewhere. Is there another one that I need? Let's check. No, it's just the guides normally. Anyway, uh, maybe it's because it's like this. Hmm. Let's check. Normally you can add some guides here, but for some reason they are not showing. So what I did was, if I go back here, I placed a guide like this in the middle of my eyes and another guide here. Mm, I'm not sure how I can 
get them on here. Let's see. If we zoom out for a moment. Why are my guides not showing? Oh, we have another donation. Okay, wait, let's head back to right here. Uh, it's from Toby Film, and I think that you it's your first time donating. So thank you so much, Toby Film. Like this, yes. Okay, let's put your name on here, Toby. Toby Film. Here you go. Thanks, man. I like your stuff. Greetings from Germany. Oh, nice. My uh, father actually lives in Germany. In uh, the northern part, somewhere near Hamburg. Uh, it's in uh, Altmüllen, I think. So, yeah, cool. Thanks so much for your support, man. Thank you so much. Greetings from Belgium. Uh, someone is asking which ratio should we use for a TikTok video? It's a 9 by 16, so that means 1080 pixels width and 1920 in the length. Uh, let's see, let's see. Let's answer some quick questions and... Uh, should you use a PC or a laptop? Doesn't really matter as long as it functions with Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, for example, here I'm using a laptop, but in the office or at home, I'm using a desktop PC. Uh, when you have more viewers, will you stop answering questions? Of course not, of course. No, 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 no. I will still be answering your questions. We're a community, guys. If you have a question, I will help you out and answer that, of course. Shoot, edit, repeat. Yeah, Bellum videos, exactly. Shoot, edit, repeat. That's the lifestyle that you want to create as a creator. Make a video on zoom in transitions. Well, that's actually kind of what we did right here. Uh, how, how, to, how to add a moving watermark? Well, I'm not as, uh, entirely sure what you mean, but if you're like, you mean like just moving around or something? Uh, just use a transform tool, use the positioning, and just play around with it. Play some keyframes on there. Can you make a professional cinematic video using an iPhone 6S Plus camera? Well, I have an iPhone 7. I think it's uh, quite kind of the same as your 6S Plus. So yeah, you definitely can. It's just all about editing, transitions, um, maybe using some cinemascopes on there, the right music, sound effects, super important, and of course your color grading. But I think, yeah, you, you can make a cinematic video with everything. You live in the Bahamas? Oh man, okay, it's unfortunate that you can't donate, but man, you live in the Bahamas, I wanna go there. How is the weather there actually? Just come out of my laptop screen and the camera pans out. I am jumping from search to search. How do I achieve that? Um, if I understand it correctly, you probably want to use Adobe After Effects for that. And I think we have a tutorial about that, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, but you're, it's like you want to go on your laptop and stuff has to come out of it. Uh, you can also do that in Premiere, but I think it's better to use Adobe After Effects for that. And um, the camera pans out. I'm jumping from search to search. You're like, <laughs> mm, yeah, I would use After Effects for that. Um, could someone use Lockdown for that? Lockdown, you, I think you can use Lockdown, but it's not working in Premiere Pro, I think. I'm not entirely sure, but um, I think it's only for After Effects, if I'm correct. Woohoo, my name on the board. Yes, of course, whenever someone donates, I put the name right on here so that everyone can see who's donating to this channel, who's supporting the channel the most. Of course, everyone is supporting it by watching this live stream or leaving a like or subscribing to our channel. But of course, a small donation is always welcome because that's how we can maintain this channel and support it. Um, and work on it every single day, of course. Is there a plugin for easier tracking than just keyframing? No, for there isn't, unfortunately, not for Premiere Pro. Uh, let's see. 
Where are the other boys of Cinecom? They're in the office, editing. TikTok is banned, yeah, unfortunately, but we can also use this, of course, for uh, Instagram stories or for Facebook, Twitter, whatever you're using, actually, from social media. Where do you download sound effects? Well, I do... Uh, what do I use? I use Storyblocks Audio. They have a, a lot of audio uh, sound effects. Uh, I think Artlist also has some, and Epidemic Sound also have has some. Um, but I mainly use Storyblocks Audio. There are some other websites where you can get them for free as well, but you always have to check the licenses, of course, because n normally you should pay for the license if you want to use it for a commercial use or something. Uh, wait, there is a question about DaVinci, but maybe it's similar to Premiere. Is there a possibility to automate any property depending on a music property? So I think what you're saying is, can you edit to the beat with just a click of a, click of a button? I'm not entirely sure if there's a plugin, but I th yeah, I think it's not possible actually, unfortunately. But um, what I recommend if you want to edit to the music or edit to the beat, is just hit M, which uh, makes a marker. Every time there is a beat, like when it goes like, you can either press M on the or on the. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not a beatboxer. Sorry for that, but uh, I would just hit those M keys all the time to get some markers on there, and that way I can easily drag my clip to that marker, and it will um, be on top of that beat. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, indeed, Bavin, I have to also place the ruler on there. Let's see, where is it, where is it, where is it? Save margins. Of course, here they are. Okay, so let's head back into uh, Premiere Pro, actually, and uh, continue with the track. So as uh, Bavin mentioned, we also edit, edit, have to edit uh, the tr uh, rulers right here, which are these ones. That's why I uh, forgot about them. I thought it was uh, in the same menu as the snap guides or the show guides right here. So we have our safe margins. I always use them. It's always it's also nice because there's a middle point right here and right here. But I'm not going to use that middle point. Then I'm going to add the rulers and show my guides, and then I'm just going to Go back for a moment, like right here. I think there is a keyframe on here already. Let's check. No, there isn't. Let's go here. Okay. So then I'm I'm hundred percent sure that I uh, positioned correctly. So let's drag a guide in the middle of my eyes and one from the top as well in the middle of my eyes. Okay. Now this is super useful. And why is this? Well, you can also use like. Um, you know, you can make a circle and position it in the middle of your face, but if you're going back and forth with your face, the the size of your frame, uh, of your face also changes. So what you can also do is add another one here and position it on your chin, for example. And that way you can always see that this, the distance between your eyes and your chin is the same. So you can also play with the scaling option. Now that's something that I didn't do. I only went for the positioning. Let's zoom back out. Why isn't it zooming out, guys? Premiere, you're doing something that I don't want you to do. Okay, here you go. So let's zoom a little bit in. And let's see, there is a gap here. And as you can see, it's not correctly positioned. So let's reposition it. It has to go more to the top and a little bit more in the center of my eyes. Here we go. Then we use the arrow keys to change our frame. Let's go frame back in time, reposition it. Mm, reposition this one. Now, for example, here I also rotated my head a little bit. And of course, you can also rotate your um, position right here, but I don't want to do that. I want to keep it steady. So right here, we also have to readjust it. Place it in the middle of our eyes. So 
something like this. here okay we have to correct this now the good thing um, about keyframes is when you're like making a movement for example here I can go a little bit further in time place a keyframe here go a little bit further in time and change the keyframe to this position and all of the keyframes or the frames in between will be automatically animated so that's a nice way of uh, doing this but I do want to adjust these manually on each keyframe it does take a lot of time but it gives the best result so as you can see now it tracks my head perfectly I'm always in the center of this uh, cross right here so let's see, it can be a little bit more in the middle. And I'm like really putting some effort in this. I really want to make it super good. Okay, a little bit like this. I'm not going to finish it entirely because there are a ton of keyframes on there that I still have to do but um, the thing also is if you de-check this checkbox and use the 180 shutter angle here you create motion blur and that's what gives this the best result now of course you can also use uh, I saw the chat someone saying uh, use the warp stabilizer this will stabilize your footage but my footage is stationary because I'm just zoomed in now to my positioning here but my footage in itself is stationary I shot this from a tripod so that's why I'm using this method uh, because it also creates motion blur as you can see here and it's just a super nice way now if you have Adobe After Effects you can just manually select an eye track that motion and that way it goes way better it will just follow uh, with just a couple of clicks on the inside the After Effects so let's skip some frames here Hopefully it will create a, a nice animation between all those keyframes. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. He's going down again, so let's bring him back up. He's going to the right, so let's bring him back to the left side. Here you go. A little bit more in the center here. That's quite finished right now. Let's, oh no, let's bring this one back here. And we're in the middle. Okay, and now this entire section is quite finished. So let's disable these. Let's have a look so it zooms in. All right, let's go. And then it tracks my dancing. And that's how we can track inside Premiere Pro. Super nice, right? Okay, so the next thing that I did was um, let's zoom in here. Let's drag this away. And I took the last frame here and I actually should reposition this right now. Like this. Maybe, yeah, kind of. I took my last keyframe right here and made another freeze frame from it. It goes up and I put another dust uh, particle on there. So it goes like poof, it's gone. And then there comes the Julian or Josh VFX um, effect that he always uses. It's like 
There's a freeze frame coming in, and it goes off, and then the next one is coming on screen. So when we're doing the second keyframe here, I'm zooming my background because it was zoomed in here. So I took my uh, empty clip from the beginning, this one right here, and I nested it so that it's uh, positioned correctly. And then I use the transform tool to zoom it back out. I don't see a piece on here, so let's do that. All right. And this is just the same, it's just a freeze frame of, of me doing a pose. And it's flying on screen. It's turning a little bit. It's turning back and it's flying off. Nice, right? So let's make another one of those. So first I need my shot where I'm doing the poses, which was actually right here. Let's take another one, maybe this one, for example. An in point, an out point, it can be a really short thingy. Uh, let's close the panel. Let's see, is there a lumetry applied here? Let's do it here. Is there actually something applied to this one? I'm not entirely sure. Hmm, that's a bit, a little bit too much. Okay, so um, I want to take this frame right here. So let's do a export frame. I'm gonna do this in Photoshop once again. Now, of course, if you don't have Photoshop, use the masking tool here in the opacity property to mask yourself out. But since that takes a lot of time, I'm gonna do this in Photoshop. So I'm gonna go for freeze frame number two, another PNG, hit okay. Get rid of this, where is it? It's right here, right click on there, edit in Photoshop. And while Photoshop is loading, I'm going back to the comment section real quick. Let's see, where did we end with the comments? Um, whoa, there's been a lot of comments, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, are there any pro tips while shooting dialogues for recording sound? Um, it all depends on your environment, of course, uh, and the microphone that you're using. So if it's a directional microphone, make sure that you don't direct it towards, like for instance, a fan or a lamp somewhere that's making some noise, but direct it towards the mouth of your character, of your actor, that is. Um, yeah, but it all depends on your environment, on the uh, equipment that you're using. So I don't have any specific um, tips for that. Is it possible to color grade a video shot on an under 10,000 phones? Uh, so yeah, okay, uh, can you use the front camera and can you um, color grade that? Yes, of course you can. You can color grade anything, anything. Now the thing is, if you have a high-end camera, like a cinema camera or something, then you do have a little bit more information, more bit rate, more uh, depth of field and all of that. And that makes it a little bit nicer and easier and better to color grade. It has more data, more data, whatever you want to call it, um, which the front camera doesn't have in your phone, but that doesn't make a difference. It still has video footage that you can use to color grade. So yeah, you can do it. I do recommend using the Lumetri scopes for that so that you make sure it's not um, clipped in the highlights or in the blacks or whatever. Uh, Black Magic Fusion, Nuke, or After Effects, which is the best, uh, whatever you have available. It's all uh, equally good. Mocha Pro is available for tracking in Premiere Pro. That's true indeed, but uh, Mocha Pro is a paid plugin, so I don't do paid plugins here in the tutorials because I want to keep it free and I want to keep it basic. Now, of course, if they would sponsor us, I would tell you about it, but uh, they're not sponsoring this video. Um, so yeah, you can use Mocha Pro if you want to buy that, but uh, we didn't do it. So um, yeah, I'm just doing it like this. Um, there's a video of Taylor Swift where a snake turns into a butterfly. I will tell Jordi and Janik about that. That's a really cool thing. 
maybe they can recreate it. Please make a video Tokyo Ghost Go eye effect. Uh, I don't understand. Uh, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the uh, Tokyo Go eye effect is, but I will look it up. And I see that Bellum video is donated again. So uh, thank you for that, Bellum. CEO of TikTok approved. Well, thank you so much. Let's put your name on here again. Bellum V. Uh, wait, where is the accent on the E going? It's like this, right? Bellum video. It's in French. I saw your channel, man. You're French. I saw it. So, uh, where was I? Something about the Tokyo Goal effect. Um, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Oh, right here. Uh, I will have a look at it if it's possible to make in Adobe uh, uh, Premiere Pro, of course. I will uh, definitely recreate it maybe in the live stream or in a tutorial. Is After Effects really worth the price? Yes. After Effects is really powerful. You can really do a lot with it. Can you make more videos about audio in Premiere? Definitely, if you want that, and we can do that. Do you want, do you want the video for a write-on effect? Well, I actually did a test for that. I'm not sure if I already made the video, but I, uh, I made a test for it and it worked. So uh, yeah, I will definitely ma make that a video. Um, Let's see, let's see. A detailed video about masking. Well, we do have a tutorial on our channel about masking where I tell you all the trips and tricks about it. So definitely check that out. Um, what will the end result look like? Well, it will look a bit with all kinds of effects in there. Um, not entirely sure what the uh, when it's gonna be finished because we're already going for an hour I see so uh, that's like 30 more minutes or something and uh, hopefully we finished it how do I get those blue lines in front of the preview okay let me show you so let's head back wait uh, let's head back to Premiere Pro so you go into the program monitor like right here oh that's why you guys didn't see it like this that's better right so you go into the program monitor right here, you hit the plus icon, and you select the show rulers, you s drag it on there, same for show guides, and save for safe margins also, and then you hit those, and bam! Now to add an extra ruler, just drag it from the top or bottom, wherever you want it. You can also get rid of them by just dragging them away. Okay, so we were doing our freeze frame effect, so let's head back into... Um, Photoshop right here and do a quick selection. Let me just drag this down back again. Here we go. Now the subject is selected. Uh, it's not good uh, right here, so I'm gonna have to change that up a bit. Let me do that real quick. Oh. Let's see, where did the... Okay, so um, this is some uh, minor detail work in Photoshop. Of course, you guys don't have to do this, but I just wanna make it really good so that we have a super good TikTok video to show to the world. Uh, I think I will finish this video for even when it's not done in this live stream and then I will post it on my TikTok um, so that you guys oh so that you guys can see it. Now if you guys want to follow me on TikTok it's at gil.creator uh, so it's g i -L 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 -E -S dot creator. Hmm I'm thinking about making my muscles like super big on here, but yeah, that's something extra that, that we don't have a time for. So let's just save this. And normally this, yeah, should be a PNG right now. Let's go, let's put it on here. Let's make the same length as this one. Okay, let's drag it here. And I'm actually gonna use the exact same 
effect controls for the second one as for the first one. So let's just duplicate the transform, control C, go in here, control V. And normally, yes. Here we go. But I'm gonna change the first position a little bit. I'm gonna actually um, take the first keyframe and just reposition it somewhere over there. Normally it should fly in from the right. Yeah, there we go. Hoppa. Okay, looking nice. Now, of course, we do want to have kind of a handheld movement on here because now this is just moving and not the entire camera per se. So uh, let's see if we can do that. Oh man, come on from here, work along with me. Where are we, where are we? We're right here, okay. Good, so we're gonna create, or no, we still have one. We use the adjustment layer right here. We apply the transform effect on there. And then we can just simply, uh, what are we gonna do? We're gonna change the position, the scale, and the, where is it, rotation. Let's also put it to 180. And we're just gonna slightly scale this, maybe to 105. Rotate it like 3%, maybe. Reposition it a bit like this. Oh, we have to go a little bit. 106, no, still have some borders on here and here, so let's go 108. Let's go back, maybe, let's do minus two, and let's change the position a little bit to here, maybe 106, is that possible? Okay, no, we still have a border on the right side. Okay, that's good. So let's see, we have, Ah, it's kind of a slow move and we can make it faster. Let's just bring those keyframes closer together. Yes, and that way we get already a little bit of a motion on there, an extra motion. I like it. Okay, now we can just simply copy them. Control C, let's go a bit further. Copy V, or Control V, and Control V again. And now we have like a uh, rotating camera. Now it goes really slow, but of course you can select all, control A. Let's do a, hmm. Why isn't it working? Let's select all of these, for example. Right click, okay. Auto Bezier. Same for the position. Come on, select all here and here. Let's do a auto bezier as well. And same for these. Okay, that's nice, that's nice, that's nice. Now, of course, we can make as many poses here as we want. So let's do maybe one more. So let's go back to our rushes. Let's see, do I have another pose ready? <laughs> this one looks funny, okay. In point, out point. Uh, let's get rid of this panel right here. And we also need the Lumetri control. So control C, control V. What do we want? We want this one. What do you guys think? Do we want this one or do we want this one? Which one is cooler, the first one or the second one? Let me know, guys. Let me know. And in the meanwhile, I will be answering some more questions. Let's see. Okay, so last week, Bavin, you had a problem with the remapping and software uh, re reinstall and it worked. Awesome, nice, great. Why is the slow mode like one hour long? No, it's uh, 
it's like 60 seconds so you're good you're good it's just so uh, no one's spamming in the comment section nightbot who are you nightbot is actually just a plugin it's a, a bot actually What are you making? We're making a TikTok video. Have you worked on any films yet? Yes, I have. I've worked on short films and I've also been working as a um, production assistant on a uh, bigger film, um, a theater film, which was also in, in movie theaters and stuff. It was a film made for kids, so it was like, uh, if you are from Belgium, you probably know it. It's called Sinterklaas. Um, it's not like Santa Claus from Christmas. It's kind of... He kind of looks like, but he's not the same person. Um, and yeah, uh, if you're from Belgium, you probably know him. Or if you're from Holland or something. Um, so yeah, it was a movie about him. So it was made for children. And yeah, I did some production work on there. Uh, it was really nice. Had a lot of fun working on it. Uh, but I saw the movie result in the theaters and I didn't quite like it um, maybe I was too old for it or something but yeah I really, there were some cool VFX in there because we also shot in a super big green screen studio uh, for some night scenes on top of rooftops there was actually a set made of rooftops which was really cool reminded me a bit of um, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit uh, but yeah it was super nice to see that but the result, I mean, it was good, but it was too much for little children, especially the dialogues. I didn't quite like them. Uh, how to make a fade transition? Well, there are multiple ways to do that. You can place two clips against each other, right click on them and use a default transition. You can work with the opacity, like animated from 100 to zero. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff with that. Let's see, let's see. Weird question, but have you guys ever thought about doing a Dutch channel or is it not a good idea? Well, I've actually seen a Dutch channel this weekend. I was just scrolling on YouTube and then suddenly I came across a Dutch guy um, from Holland who made uh, tutorials as well about filmmaking and stuff and editing. Um, I kind of liked it, but I think that if you make it in English, it's for a way bigger audience and that's a little bit nicer. But if you want to keep your niche like only nationally, like in your own country and other countries understand Dutch, then yeah, just go ahead and do it. Um, we're not gonna do it probably. We just keep it in English so that everyone can understand it because we want to uh, teach people globally. But yeah, if you guys wanna do it, just go ahead and do it. Can you import a 3D model in Premiere Pro? No, unfortunately not, unless if it's a uh, MP4 file or whatever. Let's see. First one is better, second one is better. Come on, I got first one, first one. Okay, I got three votes for the first one, one for the second one, so we're going for the first one. Uh. How will you you project exported film in a movie theaters? Uh, I didn't do the editing on that film, so I'm not sure what the entire process is of, ed of, of exporting it for a movie theater, so I'm not sure about that. Now, I do did make a uh, short film, which we also released in uh, a movie theater, but just for one night with uh, an audience that we invited. There was like 200 people over there. Um, and I think I just made a mp4 file or avi file i'm not sure entirely could be also a mob file uh, i just exported from premiere pro and we just used a laptop to connect it to their giant beamer or projector whatever you want to call it and they just displayed it but it was kind of a like a private um movie theater not like the big ones but still it was really nice let's go back now to premiere pro and you guys wanted the first, which was this one. So let's take this one. Let's export a frame, which is the, uh, let me guys show you because you probably can't see it. It's this one right here, like the, the 
camera let's click it let's change the name to freeze frame number three okay and it's here let's quickly do that in Photoshop of course you can also mask it in Premiere Pro but like I mentioned before it takes more time Here we go, select subject. Come on, Photoshop. Is it looking good? Yeah, it is. Thank you, Photoshop. So let's mask that. Okay, let's save that. And let's drag it on here. Let's make it the same size. So it's good. Here we go. Remove this one. Yes, here it is. Looking good. Okay. So we're gonna take the same transform effect, Control C, let's put it on there, Control V. And now I want it to come from the left side. So let's head back to our first position keyframe right here. Let's make it all the way from the left side. Let's bring it to 80% scale and whippa. And this will give us this, which looks really good in my opinion. Um, now this layer right here, I'm gonna delete all of these remainings. Let's take the last ones right here, drag them a bit closer. And I'm actually just gonna make those normal again. Uh, let's do a ease in. Let's take the first ones and do an ease out. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, what else are we going to do? Let's cut this right here. Um, let's go back to my rushes. What else did I had planned? So I was doing the poses. Oh yeah, I actually wanted to have this one as a last post, uh, as a last pose. Let's take this one. Mm. Oh, no, 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 wait, let's do here. Oh, no, 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 let's, let's take this one first because we're going to do some timer mapping. Let's take this and do it like this. Okay, so here we have our next one. Let's copy and then uh, let's do like this. I want only the Lumetri. Here we go. Let's get rid of this one. Back to the effect controls and let's reposition it towards the middle. Something like this. Okay, so normally I'm gonna do some hand movements in here. Yes, and then I'm like, hop. okay. So um, we're gonna do some speed remapping here, but first I want this to fly on screen. So what I'm gonna do is make a new freeze frame from that first frame. Freeze frame four. Uh, let's quickly bring that to Photoshop again. Uh, so someone is asking to make a video on car drifting. Uh, that's actually quite hard, man. Um, especially since we don't uh, know any professional drifters, or at least I don't. Okay, let's make that the same length as this one. Let's take the first, copy, paste. Oh, that's not what I want. I want this transform, control C, control V, yes, here we go. I don't want the last things on here. I want it to let's see what this does. Okay, so now my background only has to position to this background. So let's see, let's go back here. Let's play some keyframes. 
Okay, and let's have a look. So here, you know, let's do it this way. Uh, let's drag this one here and this one here and another one here. And that way I know how to position my background here because that thing right here has to come here. So super useful actually. Let's see. So um, we have to position it like this and like this, but it's a bit bigger as well. So let's do it like 125 maybe. Not entirely sure, guys. Oh no, it's way smaller. Okay, wait, I'm gonna do another one for the top and the bottom. That way I know how big it has to be. Hmm, so maybe like um, 115. Let's see. Mm. It's good, but because it's nested, I have this border right here, which I don't want. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna go. Mm, what am I gonna do? Maybe place a cut here. Let's take all of this. Alt arrow up. Let's take this. Place a cut. Control C. Let's head back. Control V. This part right here. And now I can simply move it around here. So this should be the same position kind of. Okay, let's animate it. So that it's going to maybe 100%, I think. And oh. Why isn't it moving? Hmm. Okay, so for some reason it isn't showing the movement. Let's just keep it the way it was, guys. Let's do some control Z. Bam. Oh, I know how we can fix this. We can just go here and change the last value here to around 102. And let's bring it back a little bit more here. Easy fix. Okay. So uh, for everyone, uh, what's it doing right now? Oh my God, Premiere, you're drunk, go home. So for if you're wondering what I did at the end right here, uh, I just used the adjustment layer to reposition those two uh, at the same time and that way I can rescale the entire process a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm doing my hand movements, my gestures. Now I could manually like track my face here as well, or my hand for example. Maybe let's do that. Let's place a transform effect on here. Um, look at the time. Oh, it's already that late. Hmm. Okay, let's do some last things right here and then I'm gonna end the live stream guys. And I'm gonna finish this when I'm home probably. Uh, so let's do it like this. Wait, where is it heading first? It's starting off here and it's going like there first. So let's go like 250%. Where is my hand? Right there. So it's like. has to zoom into the middle first because I wanted to zoom into my hand still in the middle 
Fill in the middle. Now it's moving a little bit. Oh, first it's going there, so it still has to be in the middle. Kinda. And then we're moving out. Yes, and now from here we're going up, so let's go that way. Okay, and here we have our tracking. So I'm tracking my hand. I'm doing this manually, of course, but looks good. Let's go a little bit higher. And then I'm going to the middle. So let's head to here. And I'm actually going to go uh, and from this position right here. Let's put another keyframe for the scaling. I'm going to go to here and here. I want it to be 285. So I have to reposition this a little bit more. Now, why do I want this? Well, I don't want to go over 300 because the um, transform effect has some difficulties when you go over a 300% scaling. Premiere will go super slow and I don't want that to happen. Okay, so I see that we do have to uh, manually adjust these last parts a little bit. Let's get rid of these for a little moment. Let's go here. So I'll go here. And now, let's see, let's get rid of this one. Oh yeah, this is looking good. Okay. So, it's tracking our hand. Okay, and now we do want a speed ramp. So what we're first gonna do is we're gonna uh, nest this clip. We're gonna right click on the effects button right here. It's time remapping, speed. Hit B or you can just control and click and this will allow you to place some keyframes on there. Uh, so let me check, I was doing a lot of movements here. Until here, so this is the go like really, really fast. Come on, man, work along from here, work along. Yeah, here you go. Let's do it like about 300%. Yeah, let's see. Let's bring in some ramping, let's smoothen the ramp. Here you go. can be a little bit faster maybe okay now here uh, once again we can track this so that it doesn't move the entire time going up and down because my arms were going up and down the entire time when I was doing it um, but yeah I'm not gonna put some time and effort into that right now because it will take a little bit of time especially because I was speed ramping this right now and same here, I think I will, I will like track my hand. Then here it closes normally. Oh no, it's another shot. Like here, maybe let's do like a turn here. Let's uh, nest it again first. We don't wanna get any problems with Premiere. Let's head over to our effects, look for the transform again. Uh, 180. Let's scale, position, rotation. Uh, where is my turn starting? So it's starting here. Okay, let's scale 250% again. Let's turn that way, reposition it. Okay, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. for some reason there are some problems with Premiere and this slider right here. Okay. Let's ease them out and let's ease these in. Now of course because I nested this we still have the black border so uh, we might want to get rid of that. Let's zoom in maybe a little bit quicker. Oh I like this. Here we go like this. 
do we have to reposition it a little bit and then let's go back to our first keyframe so wait let's uh first drop some keyframes back here then do like this and we're gonna zoom out back to 100 let's put that back let's ease those in let's see what this does whoa okay that goes really really fast let's put a more, little bit more time on that okay it goes really fast but I kind of like it it could be like a transition but I'm gonna place these a little bit further apart uh, now the scaling has to go slower otherwise we have black borders something like this let's see same here we can also we can already start the scaling here oh yes this looks cool let's see pop, pop, or okay and actually um, let's see let's see let's see when we're at our final keyframe right here let's double click that nest sequence let's double click again and now we're back in the original one and let's place some keyframes here and go back to our beginning right click on them ease out right click on them ease in now why do i do this right here because this is my original layer and here is already a nest so if i this is actually cut on these borders you can see it as a cookie cutter whenever you're nesting something so everything that is beyond these borders will be cut uh, on my original clip this there isn't so i can still drag this around so yeah, that's why normally, wait, where is my nest? Here, my sequence, so hop, hop. And normally now it should zoom out back. Yes, back here, looks good. So we track our motion, ba 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 <laughs> Okay, this looks really fun already. Let's save this so we don't uh, lose it. Muscular as okay thanks for that <laughs> i don't have a lot of muscles anymore though because the gyms are currently closed due to uh the pandemic so uh yeah my muscles are gone a little bit but no problem i'd still do some training at home and whenever the gyms are back open we'll get a uh, buff again okay let's see uh To make these things, you should be creative, and being creative is hard for some people. That's true. Um, not everyone is uh, as creative as someone else. Um, I myself am really creative. I, yeah, that's also the reason why I'm kind of weird sometimes because my mind is just like going all places all the time. Um, but how you get creative? How can someone be more creative or get more creative? Well, there are many ways. Read books, watch movies, go outside, just look at stuff get inspired by everything like when you see a bird flying don't just look at the bird like oh there's a bird in the sky no look at like how is the motion of the wings going maybe that inspires me like the motion goes like wham what else can i do with that motion maybe something like an effect where a door is going like this for some reason i'm just uh like throwing some ideas here but yeah just get inspiration from things that all that are around you okay so also yeah like i said watch movies and read books and just see other people's stuff or go online and look at other people's stuff get inspired don't copy and paste them but get inspiration from them you can try to replicate something that they made and get inspiration from that i always do that i also do that i mean I go onto story blogs or YouTube or whatever. I look at stuff. I try to recreate it as best as possible with another technique than that they used for it. And then that way I get more creative because I found another way to do that. And yeah, I think that's a really nice process for people that aren't really creative to get more inspired, to get more creative. And along the way, eventually you will get some cool ideas 
that are from you. They aren't copies from someone else. They aren't replications. They aren't inspirations. They are just solid ideas coming straight out of your mind. So yeah, uh, let's see. Hello from Uzbekistan. Let's hello from Turkey. Hello from Belgium. Uh, let's see. Let's see. You look like Jordy while you're performing stunts. Well, thanks. <laughs> I'm a little bit shorter than Jordy though. Uh, he's a little bit, uh, he's like a really big tall guy and I'm not, I'm really short. And Toby Film just did another donation. Thank you so much Toby Film, that's two times already. Thank you so much. I'll put your name on here. Let's see, Toby Films. You were from Germany, right? I'll definitely check out your channel once this live stream is over. Uh, but really, thank you so much for the donation. Thank you. I really, really, really appreciate it. And you said some appreciation for your fighting skills. Well, thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. Show us the full clip. Creative as f <laughs> I'm not going to say the last word, but thanks, man. How to make an advanced clone effect? Well, that's probably coming early 2021. Uh, or you, they all, we also have some on the Cinecom channel as well, so you can definitely uh, look at them over there. You look great. Thank you, guy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Watch from your basics to get creative inspiration. Ah, oh, that's a nice compliment. Thanks, man. Or watching some behind the scenes can be very inspiring. That's true indeed. Hello from Mexico. Hola. How are you? Como estas? Hola, Belgium. Belgium number one. Belgium number one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. I'll show you um, the final result that we already have because I'm going to uh, quit the live stream real soon. Um, because, yeah, I have to go home as well, make dinner, eat. Work a little bit more, go to sleep, and start back tomorrow for another Premiere Basics tutorial. So yeah, let's play this. Uh, we've already got a lot of effects in here, but I will finish it and I will post it on my TikTok. I will post a, a link to my TikTok real soon. But let's first have a look at the effect. So I'm flying on screen. There's a first transition, really cool. Then there is our manually tracked motion tracking while I'm dancing. All right, all right, whoop, and he's gone. And oh, apparently there's a lot of problems going on here. Let's see, maybe. And that's it, okay. So apparently there's something wrong with this layer. I will have a look at it, but um, yeah, that was it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Of course, um, we couldn't really finish it because it does take a lot of time, especially because, um, yeah, it's in uh, Premiere Pro. So like, for example, the masking, we, we either go manually and it goes really slow or we go in Photoshop, which is a little bit quicker. But yeah, not everyone has Photoshop. Same for the tracking, we have to do that manually, which takes a lot of time. But if you have After Effects, simple as that. Okay, let's do a last quick uh, Q&A before I finish this uh, live stream, guys. I will po post the result once it's finished uh, in the comment section below. But let's see my TikTok. Let's post it here is uh, like this. Also, I hope you can see these emojis. Let me post them real quick. These are some custom made emojis and you can get them with the membership on our channel, which is not there yet, but it will be there in 2021. Also guys, I made a community post asking you guys for footage because once again, I will be editing your videos, your footage. So you can send it over to hello at premierbasics.net. That's our email address where everything comes uh, to my mailbox. And then I will use that footage to make some cool edits. I will enhance the footage if possible, uh, put some effects on your footage. 
And um, yeah, there will also be a giveaway linked to that, but um, I'm still figuring some stuff out about the giveaway and how we can make it fair for everyone. Um, because there are some problems. We want to ship something to uh, India, for example, because the customs there are a little bit, you know, um, harsher than here in, uh, in Europe. So uh, we're still figuring that out, but there will be a giveaway linked to that. And yeah, you guys will win something as well if you win the giveaway, of course. Um, or we can make it like a competition more, like with, with some you know, votes and stuff. I'm not sure about it yet, but there will be uh, one. Um, and it will be there, let me check the date, um, in two weeks. So on December 21st, so a couple of days before Christmas. So yeah, let's put the email there. So our email is hello at premierbasics.net. And then I'll put it like this. Whoops. Here you go, that's our email address. Okay, let's answer some quick questions. Okay, so, um, start a live stream of After Effects. I will ask Jordy, but that's probably not for this year anymore uh, because we currently are super busy with some projects as well to finish the year. Please make a video on Tokyo Goal. Yeah, I will check that out, uh, that effect, because I'm not entirely sure what kind of effect that is, but I will check it out and I will see if it's possible to recreate. Hey man, I'm making a short film and I want to ask if, uh, oh yeah, that's the same question. So uh, do you want to, do you want like uh, the text coming out of your screen or something? Or I'm not entirely sure what you mean, but if that's what you want to do, then I highly recommend using Adobe After Effects. Uh, just screen your record yourself or your, your laptop, your internet interface, when you're Googling the stuff you want to Google, then use that footage inside After Effects and let it pop out screen or something. You can do a lot with that. Uh, make one day edit with editors. So if you were also edit live and show their skills in live stream. Uh, I will see if that's possible. Maybe we can do like a Zoom call or something where I can go live with some some of you that's maybe a good idea but um yeah let's see if that's possible i will think about that but that's a good idea that's a great idea thank you for that let's go jill oh i haven't seen the uh, other um message uh nico knecht sorry for that uh yeah, it's actually just me at home. <laughs> I live by myself. But uh, thanks anyway. Yeah, not, uh, not sure what I'm going to eat tonight, but uh, thanks for that. And uh, yeah, I do speak a couple of words in Spanish, but not a lot. You will enhance or modify our videos, right? Or do an editing work on simple footage. I will enhance your footage indeed. That's what I will do. And if possible, if the timing, if there's a lot of time, I can make like a simple edit with a lot of footage from you guys, if there's enough footage. Um, but um, yeah, I definitely will enhance your footage, your, your clips. Uh, how is TikTok in 2020? I deleted it. Well, it all depends. What I like about TikTok is the algorithm because it only shows things that you like or things that you um, entirely watch. So for example, I like and watch a lot of other creators. That's why TikTok only shows other creators to me. Whenever I see like a, a girl dancing or like something that I don't really like, I just hold the hold it and then you can select not interested and that's how uh, TikTok knows that you're not interested in that kind of videos. Um, so my TikTok is basically creators, like photographers, designers, editors, and um, filmmakers, and uh, videos about Call of Duty Warzone because I watch that a lot, because I also play that. 
Uh, someone is asking for a Discord server. We do have a Discord server from Cinecom. But um, yeah, I will see if there's enough audience then maybe we can make like a sub server on there for Premiere Basics. I'm not entirely sure how it works. I'm not that familiar with Discord. But uh, yeah, w there is one for Cinecom and you can leave questions there. You can show us your work. You can do everything in there. Um, I think there's a link to it on all the Cinecom videos. So definitely go over to our channel over there and there's something, there's, there will be a link to the Discord channel over there. Let's see, Love from India. Love back from Belgium, man. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Can we see more viewers on Cinema 4D on Cinecom? Yes, yes, of course, definitely. Uh, can you please make a video on eye opening and eye closing effect? Um, do you mean like uh, placing uh, an effect on the eye and then opening and closing the eye so that the effect like stays on your eye but you know it disappears behind your eyelids or what what do you mean exactly because i do like the question and i'm interested in effects that involve eyes what is the best gpu for adobe premiere and after effects uh not entirely sure about that you'll have to look that up on the internet because uh yeah i'm not really good with the internal stuff of a computer uh i don't know much about computers Let's see, love from Nepal, love from planet Earth. Who says I'm on planet Earth? Maybe I'm I'm on Mars or maybe I'm on the moon. We do have some good Wi-Fi here though. <laughs> uh, hey man, uh, I'm, I'm in film school in Bruges, but we don't learn a lot of useful stuff. Most of my inspiration comes from movies. Like yours, oh, okay. Um, yeah, um, when you go to film school, you do learn a lot, but at the same time, you don't. Um, I think there's a lot of theory that you have to learn, and that's what they are good for. They teach you a lot of theory, but I think the practical side of film school is a little bit, well, that's good. Uh, but on that note, I will also say that you just have to practice a lot. Just go out, shoot, edit, make mistakes, learn from them, repeat. And that way you will get the theory from school and the practicing from just doing it yourself. Uh, thank you for the replay. I'm always uh, creative. Awesome, man. Stay creative. East or West, Cinecom and Premiere Basics is the best. <laughs> Thanks, man. Please tell your computer specs. Well, if you press uh, exclamation mark setup, you will get the specs on here. Uh, it's uh, in the night bot. I made it uh, a command. So it's just, uh, yeah, exclamation mark setup. And that will give you everything you need to know. Oh, the way you, you like a, a POV from your eyes and then you see like a shutter from your eyes actually. That's something cool and we can create that so maybe we can do that in one of the live streams or maybe I can make like um, a tutorial about that but it's actually a great idea um, let's see yeah I'm gonna write that down because I do like that idea and GPU yeah I think Nvidia is indeed well a good choice I believe Proxima Steel I'm not sure what we have um, we have Mars operator Thanks for your dedication on this channel. You're running it a very cool way. Thank you so much, Harry's look. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that comment. It's super sweet. Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. This man is a genius. No sarcasm, but thank you so much, Unique Enigma. Thank you so much. Sending you my event work. Awesome, man. Send it over. Hello at premierbasics.net. Send over your footage, send over your clips. And in two weeks on the live stream, I will enhance your clips. I will edit them. I will make some super cool stuff with that. We also did a previous version of that, which you can find on our channel. Uh, I think there's a, yeah, you can just press the link wherever it is to our channel and watch it after this live stream ends. Um, so yeah, let's see. 
you have seen our tutorials, but you haven't seen our live streams before. Man, we go live each Monday, so definitely stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, and our tutorials are each Wednesday, so definitely check them out. Also, each of our live streams is also available on the channel, so you can just re-watch them whenever you have the time. Um, now, some of the live streams do have some technical difficulties, sorry for that. Luckily, today we didn't have any, so that's super good. Um, yeah, but you can definitely re-watch those on the channel. Let's see, uh, well, we have a lot of new viewers coming in. Thanks, guys. Please make a tutorial about that. Yes, I will make the tutorial about the eye opening and closing from the POV standpoint. Jordy make a video on the Cinecom setup. Uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Jordy did make a video about uh, our laptops and our computers, I think, that we use on in the office itself. So you can also check that out. You have an exam tomorrow, okay. Good luck with that. What's it about? What do you have to study today or today or whatever? Can you make a tutorial about really smooth transitions with adjustment layers? Well, I did use an adjustment layer for some transitions in here and this live stream and we also did that in I think the previous video where we did the YouTube uh, intro. I used the adjustment layer for some effects on there. But yeah, um, that's also a great idea for a tutorial. So I will definitely consider doing that or just maybe I will use it in other live streams. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, just call you Harry. Okay, thanks, Harry. <laughs> You've been learning from Cinecom for over two years. Awesome, man. Awesome. Now you also have Premiere Basics to learn even more. You have watched all Cinecom and Premiere Basic videos until today. All are the best. I keep on waiting. Thank you so much, man. Thank you guys for the amazing support on this channel and also on the Cinecom channel, of course. Um, Oh, you have an exam of uh, Dutch. Okay, good luck with that. How to make the Instagram glitch effect. I'm not entirely sure what that is. So if you have an example, drop it down below. If you have a link to it. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what the Instagram glitch effect is. Just subbed and liked. You deserve it and many, many more. Thanks, man. Thank you for the sub. Thank you for liking this video. Uh, guys, I'm gonna end this uh, live stream. So uh, thank you all so much for the support. Thank you for watching. If you guys like this channel, then definitely share it on your social media with your friends and family and other people so that everyone can keep on learning Adobe Premiere Pro. If you have some ideas for transitions, uh, for uh, tutorials, I'm sorry, for tutorials or for live streams, then drop them in the comments down below once this video is uploaded. So not in the comment section right now, but in the real comments beneath this video. And yeah, if you want uh, to be to your edits, your footage to be edited by me in the next live stream, not next week, but in two weeks from now, then uh, you can send it over to hello at premierbasics.net because on the 21st of December, I will be enhancing and editing your footage and there will also be a giveaway for you guys that you can enter with. So thank you all for watching. Thank you for the support. And as always, stay creative.